I'm joined with Jay Chris uh, here from the mobile engineering team, and we'll be discussing about uh, what is Sync Gateway in the Catchphrase mobile context, but specifically going over the Sync function and how to configure the Sync function. And from here, we're going to basically tie this all together with the concept of channels and do data orchestration. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you, Jay Chris. Uh, Chris, take it away. Hey, everyone. So I'll be talking about just one of the um, one of the main features of Sync Gateway that ends up getting used for all of the deep features that we'll address later in the uh, in these in this series. So the channels feature is used uh, for data routing, and it's also the unit of access control. The application that we'll be talking about today is a world readable application where we're taking questions from Stack Overflow and loading them up into Sync Gateway and then allowing end users to sync just the questions that are tagged with topics that they're interested in. So the Stack Overflow API does a nice job of giving you data that's already tagged. You can see this field I've highlighted here. And we'll use those tags to generate channel names. And then we'll be able to sync just the subsets of data that users care about. So for instance, if a user cared only about indexing, they would get this document. Um, and they wouldn't get the other documents in the set. How that's done is with a JavaScript function that uses a built-in API inside of Sync Gateway to, as each document comes through, pick which channels that document belongs to. In this case, we're able to pass that array of tags directly to the channel function. You could also pass a string if you only have one channel that you need a document to be a member of. So we can go look at how this shows up in our administration console here. We've got a whole handful of channels that I've pulled down in this uh, API request earlier from Stack Overflow. And here's just three of them, uh, Java, Android, and NoSQL. This is the admin console that you can use, especially for developing your sync function and for previewing what the content of your channels are. You could see a little bit with these numbers at the beginning of the entries that the entries are ordered. And we can talk more about how that ordering is used to provide reliable synchronization later in the screencast. So what we want to do is uh, right now pull in a little bit more NoSQL data, that is um, questions tagged NoSQL, and see that this feed is going to grow in real time. So, so we're set up with the page, and I'll run the import script to load more NoSQL data. And you can see that increased uh, the number of documents tagged with NoSQL. And if you're watching closely, you may have noticed that it also pulled in a new document tagged with Java. So those uh, entries from Stack Overflow ran through the sync function that we'd looked at earlier. And it was able to pick out the tags and then create these channels. And the channels are used by mobile devices to specify what they're interested in synchronizing. So in uh, this case, I'll show you the objective C code that corresponds to setting up a user preference. But it's basically the same API, whether you're doing Java on Android or C Sharp on Windows. So Couchbase Lite, which is the mobile uh, portion of Couchbase Mobile, has a replicator. And that's what knows how to interact with these channels. So we're going to create a pull replication. And if we didn't specify the channels to use, it would pull all the data from Sync Gateway in the case of this application because it's a world readable application. Now, the user that we're looking at right now cares about Android, Java, and let's just have them care about NoSQL and NoSQL. So we'll set that as the channel set and start the replication. And what you'll end up with is a mobile device that has only the documents that have one of those tags and, and therefore are featured in the channels corresponding to those tag names. So I'll, I'll go ahead. Quick question, Chris. Uh, like with that, how does the data flow in? Does it flow in uh, sequentially, in parallel, um, random? Um, trying to ask here is like, how, how does that all order happen on a client side? So the most important thing is that when the clients have been disconnected for a while and they reconnect, they can pick up where they left off. And that's accomplished over this changes feed API that is uh, presented by Sync Gateway. In my screen right now, I'm showing the HTTP version of it. But uh, typically, 
you'll be actually connected over WebSocket uh, because it allows for a little bit lower latencies. So uh, in this case, you can see the feed is made up just of metadata about these documents. Uh, it's, it's all the documents that have been written, uh, the ID of the document, so you can go and request the document itself, and then uh, revision identifier, which is used so that clients can skip pulling down documents and versions that they already have. If, for instance, they got that exact same data from a different sync gateway uh, or on a different set of channels. So it allows for efficient reconnection and uh, it allows for the mobile device or uh, the replicator to specify which channels they're interested in. And I've got a request here that shows um, just the documents tagged Android in this case. And we can see that it's got uh, you know, just a handful of documents, the same number that we're showing up here, just three documents. And uh, we're able to expand that, that set of interest by putting another one of the tags we're interested in to the API request. So now we've got a whole bunch more, and we're, uh, you know, we're looking at what the mobile client sees. So one piece of metadata in here that I haven't discussed yet uh, that's what powers the synchronization is this sequence number. The sequence number is used by the client to tell Sync Gateway uh, what the last time uh, it connected, what the last time it was up to date um, was. And so when you reconnect and pass this parameter through, it just gives you the new documents since the last time you were connected. And you can see uh, in the case where you're completely up to date, we can use this last sequence here, which is what the client always does, is, is sends back the last sequence, and we get an empty set. And the empty set's transmitted even more efficiently uh, via WebSocket than it is via HTTP. So that's the gist of how the clients are, are kept up to date. Uh, if we want to go back and just kind of dig into what's actually going on the wire here, we can see that if we have uh, a document with this identifier coming in from the Android request, and we go load it up here, that it is indeed tagged Android. That's the basics of how channels are used to provide a slice through the data that mobile clients can reconnect to and efficiently pull down the new entries uh, you know, whenever the network is available.